Sony has announced that they're going to be ceasing support for the PSP uh, downloading virtual games through the, uh, through the online store. So I decided to do a bit of a PSP overview breakdown. I'm going to do a comparison of different models you can get. I'm also going to go over uh, basically the buy-in costs and things you need to consider. I've seen lots of videos online and they're kind of just, you know, comparing the different models or, you know, what should you get or, you know, these type of things. But there's, I haven't seen anything that's kind of an all-in-one, okay, I want to get a PSP and this is what I'm going to consider when I buy in. I'm going to compare these here. I'm going to compare some different accessories, what you can do with them. I'm also going to compare the PS Vita, which is another great way to get into PSP games right now. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, what you do when you buy it. So you buy yourself a PSP, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Um, you can buy yourself a Go or a Street. I don't have either, and I'm not going to go over them in depth here because they're not that common. Um, you can certainly buy them, but you're going to be paying a premium. And these are really what you're going to find in local markets for a good price. Um, Pre-2021, these were probably... I'm going to do everything Canadian dollars, by the way. Uh, these would be probably, you know, $40 Canadian, maybe $50. Uh, now that they're, the store is closing, the virtual shop is closing, and you know we're in a pandemic, um, these have gone up in price. You're looking closer to $80, $100, maybe a bit more, even online. So there's been quite a shift there. Um, so basically you come in, you're gonna get a PSP. Um, you know, obviously you're gonna wanna make sure it's in good shape um, with the screen and everything. Uh, once you buy it, you're gonna to have to make a few assessments right off the bat. First thing you're gonna to wanna to assess is the batteries. It may not come with a battery, it may come with a battery. A couple of these did, a couple of these didn't. Uh, there's another one off screen, um, another PSP 1000. So the first thing I did is I bought this PSP 1000. It was totally batteryless, so it was no problem. I was just like, whatever, I'll buy a new battery. And so I got an aftermarket battery here. Um, this brand is instant. Um, it seems to be fine. It cost me, I believe, $10 Canadian on eBay. Um, so it was great, and it seems to have no issues yet. The PSP 1000s have a larger battery, whereas the PSP 2000 and 3000s have a smaller capacity. So when you're buying, if you're buying for a 1000, you need to make sure you get this 1800. If you're buying for a two or 3000, you're gonna to wanna to get this uh, 1200. So that's an important thing right off the bat. Um, so you wanna make sure you know, it has a battery. If it doesn't, obviously you're gonna pick one up. There are, there is the ability to get OEM PSP batteries with it. So the second PSP 1000 I bought um, actually came with this original battery. And you may not be able to tell, but it's quite thick. I actually had a hard time even getting the back off. So it's getting ready to basically blow up. It's already expanding. This battery, it does hold a tiny bit of charge, but you don't want to use this. It's going to eventually leak, get into your uh, device and just cause havoc. Uh, so this is going to be trash, but you can really tell, um, even though this isn't a an OEM one, you can tell it's quite thick, the original, so it's getting ready to burst. Um, so, you know, if it's like that, you're gonna wanna toss it, even if it holds charge. It's not it's not something you wanna mess around with. So again, this was $10 on eBay. Um, I bought these two here, one had an OEM battery. Uh, this one came in the 3000, and the battery's good. It holds a charge perfectly fine, and so I'm gonna use this. The other one also didn't have a battery, so I bought an OEM one, same brand, Instant. Uh, I've used these in the past with no problems. They seem to be pretty good. I haven't had them blow up or anything and I haven't had battery issues. I haven't had leaking issues or anything like that and they seem to hold a charge. Again, this was this was a little bit more, I think, I can't remember which one came with, but I bought on eBay and it actually came with an aftermarket charger too. So the one without the charger was 10, the one with was I believe $16. So not expensive to get in. Um, that's something you're gonna wanna consider if you don't come with, if it doesn't come with an OEM battery that's in good condition. So that's the first thing you need to do. You need to make sure you're getting a battery, some way to charge it. Uh, you may get a original charger when you buy it. Um, you know, it's just a standard Sony charger. There might be other devices that use these, like Sony devices from the era, but this one's specifically for the PSP. It works fine, it's got a good weight to it. This is the instant one that I got on eBay uh, for, you know, in, I guess it would have been about $5 technically, because I bought it with the battery. Um, and it seems to work fine. It's definitely lighter. There's less shielding in there, um, but I haven't had any issues. I've used these in the past, again, like on and off quite a bit, and I haven't had any issues with them not charging. I haven't had any issues with them not, uh, you know, any faulty faulty issues or anything and them blowing up or anything. So that's a good, same brand, instant brand, no issues there. So you're gonna wanna obviously have a charger, and if you don't have a charger or a battery, you're looking at 10 to $15 to get in on top of that. So not a big deal if you're getting one without a battery. Um, you know, it's not, a, not the end of the world. In terms of the outside shell, 
Uh, they are prone to scratches. I mean, they're older device, they're a hard plastic. This one here is fairly beat up. Um, not, well, it's not in bad condition, but there's some scratches. Um, not terrible. Uh, this 3000 is in absolutely immaculate condition. This 1000, 4 at 1000 is in immaculate condition. The other one that I have off screen, I don't remember where I put it, uh, is not in immaculate condition. It's in good condition, but there's some screen scratches. It is possible to go on, again, on eBay. That's what I would do. You can go on Amazon, but eBay as well. And you can get these replacement kits. You can get just the front shells uh, for, anywhere, for around $10 Canadian. And the PSPs, uh, especially the 2000 and 3000, are extremely easy to change the faceplate. You basically just take out some screws and the faceplate just pops right off, no issue. Even the, back, like the, the, uh, the buttons here just kind of sit in there and then you just put on the new faceplate. Very quick and easy, no problem. The replacements are a little bit lower quality, um, like the plastic is slightly different thickness sometimes and the print isn't quite as good, um, but I've used them in the past with no issues. It's easier to get the piano black replacements than it is to get these like gray or other things. That's just the front plate though. Very easy to put on. Um, like I said, five to 10 bucks would be pretty much your buying cost there. Um, this kit here I think was 15 and it came with some buttons um, and some extra components. Like you get your little analog stick, you get some of these shoulder buttons and that. So, you know, you get that on top, which is really cool. Um, and then you get a back plate. So if you just want to swap the whole thing, you can get pay an extra five to six bucks or so and get a whole kit. These are a pain in the ass to put on. There's a lot of disassembly required to put the back plate on. Um, so if you're just looking for the front aesthetic, just grab a face plate. Um, or if you're looking for, you know, more, you can go with this. I'm not gonna do a guide on it. There's lots of good guides on YouTube you can find uh, to actually do this. And it's not difficult, it's just time consuming and it's a pain in the ass. Um, so that's something to consider, you know, if you have a really beat up one, it's not a big, dish, not a big issue because the actual LCD is underneath this. This is actually, the screen here is actually built into the face plate. So you can take the face plate off as long as the LCD is unscratched underneath, which why wouldn't it be? Pop your face plate on, it's good to go. Which is really nice because, you know, scratches on this is not a deal breaker. If you see scratches on the front of a PSP 2000 or 3000, whatever, don't worry about it. Just get a replaceable face plate and, you know, you're gonna pay another five to 10 bucks. So that's another thing to consider is buying in there. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to going to wanna to get some type of storage. If you're using UMD discs, you're still gonna need some type of storage. Um, to you know, save your games. The PSP 1, 2, and 3000, uh, there's not really any internal storage you can utilize. Uh, the PSP Go and the PSP Street do have some. Um, actually, no, the PSP Street does not, but the PSP Go has built-in storage. So you're gonna wanna buy some type of storage. Uh, you can get them with Memory Card Duo, which is the proprietary ones from Sony. Um, there's like third-party offerings here, like SanDisk. Um, they don't have a lot of capacity. This is just 32 megabytes, which is like nothing. Uh, four gigabytes is actually the biggest that I've ever owned. But actually, no, that's a lie. I've had an eight gigabyte before. Um, but again, very expensive and you don't get a lot of storage. If you're just saving games and stuff and you're gonna be using physical media, uh, you know, one gigabyte would probably be fine. But um, I recommend modding a PSP because it's exceptionally easy. Lots of videos online. You can do like soft modding where it doesn't even physically change. It doesn't change anything physically and uh, you're not even permanently changing anything. You can just load it up each time and it takes a couple of seconds. And then what you can do is you, you can load up your backups and you can do emulators and things. When you get into that, you're gonna need more storage. This is not gonna be enough. This is, you know, one gigabyte is barely one PSP game. Um, there's a few that are smaller, many of them are bigger. Um, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go on you know, eBay or Amazon or something like that. And you're gonna to wanna to get one of these. I have one here, but I'll just open up a new one. And these are basically an adapter. And these work for like, you know, the Sony cameras and things too. Um, it's a memory stick duo adapter that just basically you plug in a uh, SD card, micro SD card. So you're gonna wanna get one of those. You can see it's the same form factor. You're gonna wanna get yourself a uh, SD card. Um, typically 32 gigabytes is probably the smallest I would recommend if you're gonna be doing this. Uh, you know, they're not expensive. Get a 64, um, you can get 128 if you're gonna be modding anyways. And then, you know, you have the capacity to put quite a bit on. I just grabbed this 32 because I'm gonna use it in something else. I have a lot of SD, micro SD cards at 64 gigabytes. And so um, this is a 64 here, I believe. Yeah, that's a 64. You can use this to, you know, load things on the SD card from your computer. 
you're gonna take your SD card, micro SD card, and you're just basically gonna pop it in there. Once it's in there, you can just pop it into the PSP as normal. We'll do this one here. Um, it'll automatically format it if it's not formatted. Um, you can do that in settings when you go to storage, and it's good to go. There you go. Now you have basically uh, you know, 64, 32, 128 gigabytes of storage. It's super easy. You don't need to do any modding like you do for Avita to actually get this to be accepted. So that's awesome. Uh, that's the first thing you're gonna wanna do as well. So if you don't have a large storage, comes with it, you know, this here, SD card, 32 gigabytes, like $8 Canadian, not on sale, maybe 10. These guys here are $10 Canadian. So again, this is probably, uh, you know, 15 to 20 bucks Canadian at most for your massive storage upgrade. So factor that in, 15 to 20 bucks, you're gonna to wanna to get something like that most likely, and potentially a battery. This is the first time I've actually uh, bought batteries for the 1000, because I've actually never had one before. But typically, it's almost a roll of the dice, which one you're gonna get, an OEM or uh, no battery inside, so just factor that in another five to 10 bucks, so not a big deal, something to consider as well. And there you go, now you have your storage, you have your charging, and you're essentially ready to go at that point. You're capable, now you can mod your PSP or you can just run it with UMD disks. Um, so yeah, that's the first buying cost right there. Um, one more thing before you get into the actual devices, before you get into the devices, you're probably gonna wanna get a screen protector. You don't need to, because again, these faceplates are replaceable, but the OEM ones are better quality, especially on the PSP 1000, which doesn't have, um, it's, it's just more built into it. So what I would do is just get like a, like a plastic screen protector I think City Geeks is a brand you can get on eBay and they're good. I've used them in the past. My other PSP has them. A lot of the times they'll come with these cases. You know, these are like, you can still buy new cases for PSPs easily online. Um, this one here holds the PSP and some games or whatever. Put some games in there, UMD discs in there. Not a big deal, pretty cool. Um, these are very common, these kind of sleeves, which just slip right in. Um, these are great for just on the go too. You know, not the greatest protection, but just throw it in a bag and you're not gonna get all scratched up. This is more for that. These are great, super cheap online. It's kind of like a gel case, I guess they're called. And a lot of the times you're gonna find these, which is a hard case. These are my preferred um, case because it offers like supreme protection. Yeah, so you can still charge it when it's in here. No problem. Um, so you can plug this into the wall and you can just leave it. Then, you know, if something sits on it, you're not gonna get any damage to it. PSPs aren't super expensive, but you know why damage it? I always try to keep my stuff in the best condition I can. Okay, so that's that. So now let's go over the actual PSPs themselves. We can talk about some of the differences. Uh, first, I'll just talk about the form factor right off the bat, and then I'll get into like screen and thing like that. So in terms of form factor, um, the PSP 2000 and 3000 are basically the same. There's not really a big difference, so I'll just grab one. PSP 1000 is different, so. Right off the bat, the PSP 1000 is thicker. Um, hard to see on camera, but it is thicker. Uh, and it's especially thicker right here where the uh, battery compartment is and on the flip side there, which gives it a little bit more ergonomics. So it you know, feels nicer to hold and grip. Um, it is heavier though, um, probably double the weight or so. Um, maybe not exactly double, but definitely a quick fair bit heavier. Um, so that's something to consider there. A little bit thicker, a little bit heavier. It feels more premium. I will be honest about that. It feels like you're holding a more premium device uh, with more weight and more substance to it. So it feels really nice to hold. Slightly less pocketable, I guess, than a PSP 2000 or 3000, but they're all fine. And I find the PSP in general to be a very portable system. The DS is also really good, like the 3DS XL, but this is even slimmer. Um, versus a Vita, it doesn't have the raised buttons like a Vita, so it's even more, you can just pop it into a pocket and take it with you. So that's one thing to consider. The easiest way if you're looking online to tell them apart, first things first, PSP 1000, if it's not listed telling you what it is, it doesn't show you the back, is this kind of grill along the top here. If you have this grill on it, it's a 1000, right off the bat. The other models don't have that. So that's, as soon as you see this little grill here, you know it's a 1000 model, so the original model. Once you get into the 2000 and 3000, um, especially if you have like both piano black, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference right off the bat, is these buttons here. So on the, three, on the uh, 2000, the button is kind of this crescent moon shape, which mirrors the 1000. See that little crescent moon shape there? On the 3000, they're uh, ovals. So if you see one like this, 
and you look at it and you say, oh, it doesn't have a grill on the top, okay, so it's not a 1,000. Then you look at the buttons. Moon shapes, 2,000, ovals, 3,000. And there you go. Now you've identified your PSP right off the bat. All of them take the UMD discs. Uh, this one here, you have to actually eject it, hitting this little eject button. Uh, it's got a, that has a really nice click actually. I just got this a couple of days ago. It's really in good shape. Um, and I'm gonna replace it with the other one and sell that one off, but uh, it's quite nice. The 2000 and 3000, you just pop them open, uh, which is good. If you're gonna use UMD discs, you might wanna, you know, you're gonna buy one, you might wanna test it before you buy it. You just pop them in like that, close it up, and it will auto boot when you turn on the device. Um, so that's something to consider. Uh, I don't use UMD discs because for one, they kill your battery. Hard to find the games. I actually have a boatload of games behind me, but I just don't use them to be honest. It's better for me to just back up my games, run backups. Saves battery life quite a bit. Load times are substantially lower when you're running it off a memory stick. So that's that. Uh, all of them have headphone char headphone jack, physical headphone jack. They all take the same charger, uh, all these three here. Um, and uh, beyond that, you're basically looking at ergonomics and some of the things to do with like screen and that too. So now I'll talk about some of the more specific features of the PSPs. Okay, I'd cut the video there for a sec. Um, I'm gonna actually mod this PSP real quick, this new one that I got. Um, it's simple enough that you can just throw some files onto your uh, memory card and basically just do the mod. Uh, you, to do this, you do need to be on software version 6.61. Um, which is easy to get on. You can basically just get an updater. Uh, however, you do need to make sure that you have your battery in. It won't work unless the battery's in, and it needs to be fairly uh, well charged. What happened is, uh, for me, it was the battery was too low, and it was warning me I'm not allowed to do this. So basically, this is just an updater, uh, 6.61. You just run it. Your PSP will update. Uh, once you do that, then you're good to use the mod that I use. Um, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so you just run that. And then you wait, this is nothing sketchy, it's the official 6.61 uh, so, uh, software firmware, and you can just update it. So it just takes a couple minutes at most, and so we'll uh, cut for that. Okay, so the PSP was successfully updated. Um, basically just hit X, it's gonna reboot. And the one that I use is uh, to do the mod is a non-permanent custom firmware. So basically every time the PSP is turned on, you basically have to uh, uh, load this up. It only takes a few seconds. So um, let's actually install the mod real quick. Um, again, it's on the USB, just right in the front folder. You go in here, I use the uh, LME installer for 6.661. Uh, so that's why I had to do that update. Run that. This is a very quick process. In this case, I just hit X to install. It's gonna restart. Basically, my system is modded now. This is a non uh, permanent custom firmware, so it's running on its own natural firmware, which is awesome. You can always reset it. There's no problems there. Um, the only, I guess, negative, but it's not really negative, is when you load up your PSP. Every time you want to get into access your emulators or backups or whatever, you have to come in here um, and you just run this launcher. You don't need to use these anymore. You can delete them, but you just run the launcher. So you'll notice some of these titles here. Um, there's not a lot in there. Right now, if I run this launcher, it kicks out, it'll come right back in, and all of the different titles in here will work. If I were to try to launch some of those emulators, it actually wouldn't work, um, which is no biggie, but. And there we go. So what did that take? Maybe 15 seconds to load that up. And, uh, you can see it's taking longer to access the SD card this time because this is quite a big one and you can see all these titles now installed. And I can launch any of them and I'm good to go. So modding a PSP is exceptionally easy. Throw some files on an SD card, uh, update your software, your firmware, sorry, uh, install that little launcher and then you're good, basically.
Okay, so now let's get into the differences between the actual devices in terms of uh, things beyond you know, just ergonomics. Let's talk about the, uh, you know, the internals, the screen, and all that kind of thing. So the main difference in terms of uh, the internals, uh, the PSP 1000 does have half the amount of RAM um, as the 2000 and 3000. Uh, so this one here only has 32 megabytes of RAM. These have uh, 64. When playing PSP games, it won't matter, to be honest. Uh, if you do play some emulation, I have read that it does make a little bit of a difference with certain titles when you run emulators on the 1000 versus the 2000 and 3000. Um, I haven't noticed. Maybe it's the type. Um, I've run, you know, like Sega CD and things on them, and that seems to be pretty fine, pretty much fine. Um, so yeah, so that's the main difference there. However, there is a pretty substantial difference in the screens. Um, so beyond the ergonomics and all of that, the screens are actually quite different. So the 3000, the 1000 here has uh, the dimmest screen. So you have one, two, three, four brightness settings, um, and it actually doesn't get all that bright. Um, it's not bad, but it's uh, not super bright. Let me just quickly turn off the light here. It's not super dark. I don't like to make my videos super dark um, because people don't often play these, you know, sitting in absolute darkness. They play them when they're out and about. So it's not really natural, in my opinion, to record all your videos in ideal, pristine condition. But uh, anyways, so this is the brightest setting here. So, you know, it's, it's fine, but it's a bit faded. Uh, the viewing angles, you know, aren't great. Not that that's really different on any of them, but um, you know, it's pretty faded, um, but it looks fine other than that. The 2000 was a pretty serious revision. The, it does have a much brighter screen. One, two, three, four, still four settings. One, two, three, four, uh, but it's crisper. The screen looks crisper to the eye. Um, so like the text and the font all looks quite a bit better. Uh, you can see there. Um, and it's just brighter, more contrast. It's just a better screen. Um, very, very crisp in general. Um, the one downside of this one, despite being brighter, is it does have some, I guess, not inconsequential ghosting when you're playing certain games. So when you're playing quick games, especially like platformers and that, you can see some ghosting on the screen, so you can see trails. Um, but, you know, that's a minor issue. But if that is something that would bother you, uh, they did make a revision to the device for the 3000 model. Now the 3000 model um, is also very bright, so one, two, three, four, uh, almost uh, identical to the 2000 there. However, it does have scan lines. So the 2000 model is very bright, but it does have a ghosting issue. If you care, go to the 3000 model. 3000 model is just as bright, uh, does not have ghosting at all, uh, and the screen is... Um, I guess on par. However, it does have, like I said, scan lines, and I can see them. They're not just on screen. Um, you know, you can see them there on the screen. Can't see them there, but to the naked eye, you can see the scan lines. Is it a deal breaker for me? Uh, no, I actually prefer the three thousand screen because um, I don't. The scan lines don't bother me whatsoever. Uh, it's just you know, it's a very very crisp screen. The lack of motion blur is for me really really nice, especially for the types of games I play. Um, so I actually prefer the 3000, but I've used both a lot, and I think either is fine, but that's something to be considerate of. Okay, so we'll just go, uh, this is Crisis Core here, we'll just listen to the sound a little bit. So it's maxed. PSP 3000. So the speakers are up here. The 3000 also does have a microphone, the other two don't, but you know, it's not there. One thousand. So there is a difference there. In the end, they all sound fine. 
but uh, I'd say the 2000 and 3000 sound better than the 1000. So now we'll do uh, more of a visual comparison. One other thing you will notice is there's a difference in, I guess I'd say, color temperature. The 3000 has a little bit of a yellowish, orangish hue. The 2000 more of a blue, and I found the 1000 is a little bit more neutral, but uh, you guys can be the judge. Now one important thing to consider is that PSPs themselves are not the only way to actually play PSP games on, uh, on the go. Uh, PS Vitas are a great option as well. So you can download PSP games from the uh, PlayStation Network, the Virtual Shop. You can download PSP games. They're not all on there, but there's quite a big selection for now until uh, Sony stops supporting it, I guess. Um, however, for now, they are available. The other thing you can do is what I recommend is you just get a PS Vita and just mod it. Once you mod it, you can actually install uh, what's called Adrenaline, which is something along the lines of emulation. But So the Adrenaline is basically the app that's it there. Uh, you have a modded PS Vita, you can install this, and it literally runs a PSP within the Vita itself. Um, so you can see, you know, it's literally a PSP. Um, the main difference here is that uh, you can see it's a little bit blurry. I have some different filter on here, but it is a little bit blurry. And that's because the PS Vita has a, a higher resolution than the PSP. So if we actually turn that off, you can see it's fairly blurry, but it looks fine. Uh, but there are those different options in there. Um, so you know you can go in and you can change those settings uh, without too much concern. Uh, you can put on the one that best suits you. I'm going to use Sharp by Linear, which has um, a little bit of scan line thing going on just so it compares to the PSP 3000. Uh, there's other things you can do in here, which is really cool. You can do save states, which you can't do on a PSP naturally, so that's pretty sweet. Um, you can do things like overclocking in too, but if you have a PSP uh, modified, you can overclock it anyways. Um, but yeah, it runs really well. So uh, that's another thing to consider, getting yourself a PS Vita. You have access to PS Vita, and you have access to PSP this way as well. And you know there are some advantages if you mod it, and you'd use Adrenaline, you can use both analog sticks. Um, I believe some of the virtual games too, from the PlayStation Network, you can use both analog sticks too. So if you were playing like Kingdom Hearts, for example, you can use both at the same time, which really helps because the PSP only has one analog stick, which can be a little bit odd for certain games and use like, for example, the R uh, shoulder buttons to basically turn your character. So that's another thing to consider. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to do a screen comparison between uh, the three in a game. So I'm going to run Crisis Core on all three PSPs so you can see the difference. I'll do some sound tests too. But the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to include these Vitas too. So just so you know the difference, you know, you have the PSP, three primary options you're going to find on the market and two common PS Vitas. Let's do another audio check.
We'll go up to the 2,000, which sounds the same as the 3,000. Soldier second class sack on the job. We'll let it play on the PS2 2,000 for me. Same video, just with the lights on, so you can see the brightness differences. What's my ultimate takeaway that you should have when considering buying a PSP um, or a PS Vita or some way to play a PSP? Um, my first takeaway that I will say is there is no wrong way to do this. Um, just get one of them and start playing. PSP is an amazing system with loads of hidden gems, I would say, nowadays. Um, just because, you know, we're moving through generations and a lot of the younger people don't know a lot about the games that are on a PSP. But uh, there is a lot of hidden games even to the mainstream as well. Mainly, just get one. Um, PSP 1000s, uh, you can probably get for a reasonable price online in pretty good shape. Locally, you can probably get them, again, decent price in okay shape. These are probably the most likely to be beat up a bit. Um, I've seen lots of them with scratches all over, but again, you can always replace parts of it, but this one's in immaculate condition. And the other one that I have uh, isn't in bad condition, I'll just show you real quick. Uh, but there is some minor, I don't know if you can see it, probably can't see it on the video, but there's some very minor scuffing, nothing crazy. Uh, but if I was worried about it, I could replace the front, but I probably won't anyways. Um, PSP 1000, if I were to pick between all these and say, you know, they were all equally easy to get, this would be the last one I would choose, even though it has really nice ergonomics, you know, that big battery, um, and it just feels the most premium of the PSPs. Uh, it does have an inferior screen. It's, it's just not as bright and the sound isn't as good. So it has a little bit of a tinny sound to it and the screen isn't quite as bright, but it's by no means a bad experience. It feels excellent in the hands and it's a PSP, so it's gonna work great. Um, next up, it's really up to you. Uh, the PSP 2000 versus the 3000, um, they feel exactly the same. 3000 is a microphone, not that that really matters to me, but uh, you know, it really comes down to that screen. Do you want the, uh, are you okay with the scan lines to basically get, you know, the best, um, I guess I'd say the best no ghosting when you're having movement. Um, you go with the PSP 3000. It does have a little bit of a warm yellowish tint. You can see on when I compared them, it has definitely the yellowish or warmish tint of all of them, which is slightly, you know, off of what they're supposed to be, I would say. Um, the PSP 2000 has a little bit of a cold tint, not very much, just a little wee bit. Um, and it does have that beautiful screen. If it was, you know, if there was no ghosting issues, I would say the 2000 is the winner hands down, like no, con no contest. Um, but there is that ghosting issue, uh, which is pretty minor, but um, that's something to be considerate of. So really, you know, 2000 and the 3000 are both excellent. Condition, you can find them, you can easily find them in good condition for a good price without much issue. Um, so, you know, any of these you're looking at, I wouldn't pay much more than, you know, $50, maybe $60 in really good condition. Um, if you get, you know, battery and charger uh, included, uh, 
you're probably not going to get a big memory card, so you have to factor that in, you know, throw in another 20 bucks to get a nice memory card and an adapter on. So there you go. You're looking at approximately 80 to to $100 to buy into one of these. I would lean towards these two personally, but they're all fine. If you're able to find a good PS Vita uh, in good condition for a good price, uh, aka under $200 Canadian, 150 or so American, um, personally, I mean, the PSP is super portable, super, super portable. Uh, but the PS Vita is, you know, technically, it's, I would say it's the better buy, primarily because, you know, it's just better sound. The screen is amazing. Um, you know, it has really nice feel to it. You get the dual analog stick. You have some filterings and things you can do. And you can run PSP games and you can run uh, Vita games. In terms of emulation, um, the PSP actually emulates very, very well. Um, there's lots of very well-developed emulators for the PSP. You can run RetroArch on the PS Vita, but a lot of times... Your actually best bet is to run, jump into Adrenaline and then run an emulator in Adrenaline anyways, um, which changes over time. I mean, RetroArch might be even better now, but you're fine with emulating for all of them. Um, pretty, you know, any older systems, pre-Nintendo 64 basically will run perfect. So really, yeah, there, there you go. You really can jump into any of them, and I think you'll have a good time with them. Um, get them now before they start you know, disappearing. People are snatching them up. The prices have already more than doubled this year in 2020 to 2021 era. Um, so now's the time to buy them and just get one. Um, get yourself a memory card and mod them. I highly recommend modding them. The Vita is a little bit more complicated, but nothing nothing too difficult. And uh, there you go. Uh, I think you'll have a really good time just grabbing these and start playing games. One more thing I did want to add. I have seen um, some websites online um, that have and some YouTube videos where people have actually switched the LCD underneath on the PSP 1000. Um, to a much more modern panel. Um, it's an IPS panel and it gives you amazing view angles. The colors become absolutely phenomenal. If you can do that and you want to factor that in, I think it was like 20 or $30. Um, at that point, you know, really all you're compromising is on the sound. It has a little bit less memory, but really it's the sound, but that's so minor. The feel of the PSP 1000 is easily the best. So if you can, you know, I might actually try that in the future and switch out the screen on that other one. And just see how it feels and how it looks. And if that's the case, um, it might actually take the case, take the spot as my uh, my favorite PSP model at that point. I have a not so minor addendum to attach to this video. Uh, that being that I actually managed to get myself a PSP Go. Um, I still stick to my point that they're, uh, you know, they're they're kind of hard to find. Well, they're really hard to find actually. Um, and the prices can be pretty outrageous, but I wanted to do a compare or like a little bit of a comparison or rundown of this because I've now been using it for a few days. Um, luckily, I found this before I had finished like editing the video, so I allowed myself a few days to play with it. So, yeah, looking at the form factor, this I'm not going to put the PSP 2000 in because it's the same as the 3000 in form factor. So you know, obviously, it's pretty small. Um, you know, I don't really have a lot to compare it to, but you know, here's just a standard men's wallet. It's about the same size as a standard men's wallet, and it's actually thinner than a standard men's wallet, depending on what you have in it, I guess. Um, if you have lots of money, maybe not. Um, but yeah, if you can see here, it's uh, you know it's kind of an older style, kind of like that mid 2000s style. But personally, after using it for uh, it's been about five days or six days, I actually love this device. Uh, for portability, it is. Really, I guess it's probably the most portable handheld, like official handheld device that I've ever owned. Um, my younger brother had a Game Boy SP, which would be probably close to this in size, but this is quite nice. Um, you do have some compromises. The screen size is, it's, it is smaller than a standard PSP. Um, so you do lose a little bit of screen real estate, but it's not a lot. Like, I mean, we're talking um, a few millimeters. Uh, for Americans, maybe, I don't know, would that be half, maybe quarter inch in diameter, not even probably. Um, but again, the pixel density actually is better on the Go anyway, so it's not, it doesn't lose any crispness. It actually looks great either way because you have the same number of uh, pixels overall. So the density is higher. Uh, so that's nice. It is a little bit smaller. So if you're playing some games with tiny text, I guess you'd lose a little bit. But again, most of the games you're gonna be playing are designed for a PSP anyways. So it doesn't really make a difference. Um, if you're gonna be playing games like PS1 games, um, I've went through quite a few and it hasn't bothered me at all. So that's really, um, really, really nice. It's quite quite uh, portable, I would say. 
You do lose a little bit of sound quality on the speakers. Um, it's closer to the PSP 1000 in terms of sound, which I showed before that it doesn't have the greatest sound. Um, it's okay, but it's definitely inferior to the 2000 and the 3000. Um, it loses lose quite a bit of bass. Um, I don't know if it's the way the screen is, but the scan lines are much less evident. Um, so it is actually, a, in some ways, a screen upgrade because you get the benefits of the crisp colors on the 3000. Um, in some cases, the colors are actually better on the PSP Go, but you don't have uh, the scan line. So it's actually a really, really nice screen. Um, in my opinion, the best of all of the PSPs that I've owned. So that's really nice. So a couple differences here as well. The PSP Go, um, you're not really going to have expandable storage. There is a strange uh, M2 card you can get, but they don't come very large. There are some mods you can do, but pretty much you're stuck with the internal storage, 16 gigabytes. So um, that's a bit unfortunate, but I mean, I was thinking about this and, you know, it's nice to just have, I guess, all your games on your device, but I mean, you can swap them fairly easily. So it's not a big deal in the long run. Um, the PSP standard here actually have 128 gigabytes in the two, in the 3000 here, so it's a lot. The downside is it actually takes a long time to access even the memory card because it's an enormous memory card for it to go through. Uh, these, I'll actually load them up right now and we'll see the difference in load time. Um, it's going to be more or less exactly the same, so it's not really a big deal. One thing that I do recommend doing with the PSP Go is if you're going to be playing backup games, you know, you can have them in different formats. One of them is an ISO format, so you can see it is loading quicker because this has a gigantic memory card. So it is loading quicker. Uh, but one thing that to be considered here is um, these are both loading a little bit slower than normal because they can be, you can have your games, your backup games in an ISO format, which is just a disk image, but you can actually compress them to what's called, uh, it's a .CSO file, and it basically has uh, some, some compression there. And it does shrink down the game size substantially. Depending on the type of game you're using, if you're gonna be playing like an RPG or something that doesn't have quick load times, it's totally fine and it, it's almost unnoticeable. If you're playing things like Grand Theft Auto, it might impact it. However, using those conversions, you can get your file sizes down to probably approximately half the size or thereabouts, um, about a 30 or 30 or so uh, percent decrease in game size. So as a result, you can fit a lot more on the 16 gigabytes if you go with that um, with that conversion right there where you're compressing it a little bit. So I do recommend, depending on your game types, doing that conversion to the .CSO format and you can get a lot more on there. It, I did some time sequences and it added about uh, three or four seconds to a game load time. Still substantially better than UMD, um, but it's, you know, it's a little bit slower uh, overall. Um, if you're gonna be going with the internal storage on this though, it is pretty fast in comparison to using a very large S, uh, SD card here. So you can see when I loaded that up, it does load a little bit quicker. So in terms of what comes with the PSP Go, um, you do have those multiple brightness scales. So you have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, all the way through. Uh, just like the normal PSPs, it's bright enough. I find that it's no more dim than the norm, than the PSP 3000 or the 2000, which is really nice. The colors are quite good. So primarily your differences here are, um, you're gonna be getting basically the form factor differences. So the D-pad here, you know, this one here is uh, raised up a bit, so you can really feel the buttons. Uh, the PSP doesn't have a bad D-pad. It doesn't have a good D-pad. It's, you know, it's fine. Nothing wrong with it. Um, this one here, I've been using it for a bit. The, the actual, uh, like the height of the actual D-pad is a little bit lower, but I don't really notice any compromises there. It's actually a little bit clickier and a little bit less gummy than that. So in the end, I, it's actually pretty nice. The analog stick is obviously a pretty significant difference. This one here is, you know, it's a larger area. It feels quite nice. This one here feels a little bit tighter, but it's small. Uh, the placement is a little bit odd being over there, but it's not a big deal. I actually don't play a lot of games that use this little analog stick anyways on the PSP Go. I've been using playing mainly like RPGs and tactical games on the PSP Go. And uh, when I play more action games, I've been using the PSP regular or a Vita actually. Um, just because it's you know bigger and I feel like I have more control over it when I'm you know racing or whatever. Whereas this guy here, I feel like I'm a little cramped. Um, the buttons here, the actual like normal buttons are fine. Nothing wrong with them. They're a little bit lower here, but again, they're clickier than this here. They're not as gummy, so they actually feel pretty nice. 
Uh, the shoulder buttons are a little bit inferior. These are easy to get to and they feel really good to hold. The PSP is a very ergonomic device overall. Like it just feels great to use. It's for me, perfect to my hand size. Uh, that and the Vita are both great. This one here is a little bit weird because you have to kind of rest your fingers on the back there. Um, and it, it's a little weird to hold, but overall the ergonomics are great. It's so light that it's not bad. And the way that I hold it, you know, like you can get cramped up to it like that. I have slightly bigger than average hands, I would say. Not big, but slightly bigger than average, but I do have slightly long fingers. Um, so you can play games like that. If you're playing really fast action games, um, I mean, it's going to be a little bit more awkward, but it's fine. It's not really a compromise. Um, the start and select buttons are terrible um, overall, like just awful. They're in reverse position to what I would find natural. Start on the bottom, select on the top. And they're just, they're very recessed and they just feel awful. But how often are you pressing start and select? Let's be realistic here. It's not a big deal. Um, so you have your volume on the back there. That's awkward to get to. Um, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel natural to hit those buttons on the back there when you're playing games. So normally I actually flip it over if I want to turn it up and down, but it's fine. I mean, it's an ultra portable. The shoulder buttons are fine. There's nothing wrong with them. They're just not fantastic. Uh, headphone jack is in a standard location, not a big deal. Charger on the bottom. It does have a proprietary charger that is unique to this device here uh, from the other PSPs. So, you know, you can't use the PSP chargers from these here. You have to, if you don't, if it doesn't come with one, you're gonna have to buy a unique one. Uh, which is kind of annoying, but it's fine. The, it still has the hold button, which is normal, I guess, not a big deal there. You have front facing speakers, so no biggie there, same idea. Uh, this one does have Bluetooth built in, which is cool. Uh, you know, that's, I guess, pretty uh, nice upgrade to the original one, but I don't use it, but it's fine. Uh, the Wi-Fi is fine, it's kind of slow, but I mean, every device from that era is kind of slow. So overall, what I think about it is it's actually a really good device. Um, you know, for if you're using the device for extended periods of time, uh, a PSP would be slightly more comfortable, probably the 2000 or 3000. The 1000 is great, but it's a little heavy. Um, I, depending on your like hand strength, I actually say ergonomically the three, the 1000 is the best overall. Um, my 1000, these are all in really good condition. My 1000 has the most clicky buttons. Like there's just a lot more travel. They feel fantastic. The 2000 and the 3000 feel slightly less uh, in terms of build quality, but they're still excellent. The Go has actually a really nice build quality to it. Um, it's exceptionally light, like very, very light. And it's, you know, tiny, a tiny little device. Um, so, you know, if you just want to pop this in your pocket, you know, legitimately, this is extremely pocketable. It's the same size as my wallet, like I said. So, you know, I can just pop that into any of my pockets and it's barely even there. One thing to consider with the PSP Go, if you do want to get one, you want to get one with you know good screen without a lot of scratches on. This one has very minimal you know wear and tear on it, because unlike the PSP 1000 and 2000, for example, you can just swap the faceplate easily with something you can get on eBay. Um, this is a lot more difficult, and you know it's not easy to just swap the, the face. It's kind of like a it would be quite a challenge. So I wouldn't actually do that. You want to make sure you're getting a good screen here, um, which does increase the cost quite a bit. Um, and it makes it a lot less approachable online, unfortunately. But yeah, it's actually a really, really nice device. To be honest, this is probably going to be um, a much more of a daily thing for me to use when I'm going out and about. I'll actually take this with me. I can pop it in my pocket and I can play games. Again, that's why I'm going to be putting on a lot of like RPGs in that. Part of it is the ergonomic factor, but a big part of it is actually that you know I'm going to be waiting in line or whatever I'm doing, you know, doing things like that, and I don't want something that's super distracting. An RPG or strategy game, you can just quickly pop on and off and it's not a big deal. Um, so for, for the portable factor, it's quite nice. Um, in terms of, you know, sitting down, if I'm going to sit down on my couch and play games for, you know, extended period of time, it's going to be the PS Vita Slim or, you know, I don't use the Slim as much. I actually use the OLED one quite a bit more. I just like the weight to it. Uh, but they're both, like, they're fine. There's no difference between them, really. People complain a lot about one or the other and they're both excellent. So for day-to-day... At home gaming, you know, the PS Vita is superior, um, obviously. If you're going to be, you know, getting on a plane or something like that, you know, or a train, you know, bringing up this is not a big deal, you know, because you, you have the case, you bring it out, and you're ready to game, and you're sitting down for that. But if you're really, like, quite on the go, you know, if you're walking somewhere, or, you know, you're just out and about, uh, and you really need something that's ultra portable, if you can find a PSP Go for a good price, it is, in my opinion, probably the most portable 
system around. Um, it's in some ways kind of the ultimate portable gaming device. Uh, you know, you can play PSP games, PS1. You can emulate a lot of different devices here, including even N64, in some cases better than a PS Vita can because it's been optimized and it's been worked on and homebrewed for so long that the development has really come along. So yeah, that's basically just an addendum now that I actually have a PSP Go. Um, you know, I, if you're hunting for a PSP, don't go out necessarily and hunt for a PSP Go because they're hard to find and they're expensive. But if you happen to cross one for a good price in good condition, it's excellent. I would jump on it. Um, do be aware of that, you know, more or less you're going to be bounded by that 16 gigabyte storage, in, internal storage, which if you do that compression where you compress ISOs to CSO files, uh, you gain about 30 or 35 percent uh, file size per uh, per game, which is excellent because you know in most games it's not going to really affect performance. It will affect load up time to the game by a few seconds, but compared to a UMD disk, it's still much faster, anyways. So um, you know, 16 gigabytes with compressed files on there. You know, I have quite a few on here. Um, this is pretty much full right now, so let's just take a quick look here. I have uh, I have an SNES emulator. Uh, Genesis emulator and Nintendo like Nintendo Entertainment System, the SNES and Genesis I have hundreds of games, and you know it's just it's like combined maybe one gig, and then I have a lot of different PS One and PSP games on here. So, you know you're not going to have the selection, so you have to be a little bit more picky with what you put on here. This is basically max in size more or less, so 500 megabytes left. Um, so you have to be a little more picky, which in some ways is good because you know you don't just throw on like like hundreds of games, uh, hundreds of titles onto your device, and then you never ended up end up playing them because you have like decision fatigue where you kind of are like, well, I have a million games, what am I going to play? Uh, you know, you have to really be specific with you know 10, 15 games on your device. Whereas you know, if I have a PSP, 1,000 to 3,000, and you know this has 32 gigabytes free, it's a 128 gigabyte SD card. You know, I have every game that I would probably want to play. I could probably put more PS1 games on here, but you know, I have a lot of games. So if you want to get, you know, everything on one device, max storage, you're going to want to go with a PSP, well, 1000 to 3000, or, you know, you can get a PS Vita. PS Vita, you can also throw a boatload of games on it without any issue. Otherwise, the PSP Go is actually quite nice.